I have been meaning to try Hyperland for quite some time, and I have tried Hyperland several times over the course of the last two months, but as is traditional with me when it comes to anything having to do with Wayland, I completely failed. And my biggest stumbling block up until now has been getting OBS to actually record the screen. Now, I think I have that solved, so let me actually show you my screen right now, and I think you'll see, hopefully this shows up, that I'm in fact running Hyperland right now and I've done some customization. Now, here's the thing. This is a little bit of a tease because I'm not actually going to be talking about Hyperland at all today. Not in any detail anyways. I'm going to do a separate video on Hyperland in a couple days, so make sure you subscribe for that. But what I wanted to talk about today was Wayland itself because my opinion on Wayland has shifted somewhat. Not a lot, but somewhat. My opinion up until now has been that Wayland is not ready for basically anybody, especially people who make content. And I'm slowly coming around to the idea that Wayland is ready for most people. Like if you use GNOME or you use KDE, and in the future if you use XFCE, you're going to be able to use Wayland just fine. You know the future has been accepted and has arrived when XFCE has adopted something. That's just kind of, that's the measuring stick of, hey, is, is it the future yet? Has XFC adopted it? Then we can justify that it is, in fact, the, the, the future. So, Wayland, for most people, if you're using a desktop environment, is perfectly functional, and most people probably don't even realize that they're using Wayland these days. It's just something that works really, really well if you're in a desktop environment, and you're using an AMD card. If you're using an NVIDIA card... While that has gotten better over the course of the last year, it's still not quite as good as it is on an AMD card. So there are still some provisos there, some stumbling blocks, if you will, if you're using Wayland on a desktop environment. But it's much better than it used to be, and I can finally say that Wayland is ready for most people. The problem is, Wayland's not ready for the people who use window managers. It's just not. Now, if you are going to use a Wayland compositor, which is what they've chosen to call, call window managers now under Wayland, the best one for you to use probably is Sway. It's the most feature complete, it's the most stable, and it's the most supported. It has a very large community around it, and they've done a really good job of ensuring that it's easy to customize, easy to install, easy to use. Now, all that stuff is true, but obviously when you're switching to a Wayland compositor, there are going to be certain things that are important in a window manager that aren't necessarily important in a desktop environment. Or, more specifically, there are tools that you need inside of a window manager that are built already for desktop environments. Things like screen capture, screen shotting tools, screen shooting tools, whatever you want to call them, things like that. Things like color pickers are going to work better in a desktop environment. All that stuff that is usually included inside of a desktop environment, making it a desktop environment, are things that you're going to need alternatives for when you have a window manager. You're going to have to build up all those tools yourself. And the issue here becomes that you have to find alternatives to all that stuff. So things like color pickers, things like hotkey demons, things like ways of setting your wallpaper, things of things like setting your uh, GTK themes and your Covantum themes and all this stuff, all that stuff is either different or somewhat different when you're using a Wayland compositor. So if you were to switch to Sway, you'd have to find all of these alternatives to the things that you would normally use in a desktop environment, or if you were coming from a window manager that uses Xorg, you'd still have to find all those alternatives because a lot of stuff, when you're switching from Xorg to Wayland, just doesn't work, right? Because it's not going to be the same. If the developer hasn't made any changes to those applications to run on X Wayland or on Wayland itself, those things just won't work, right? Now, I've talked about that issue before, where you have to keep finding all these alternatives and it takes more effort than it should because of that process that you have to go through. The biggest issue that I've found coming to Hyperland is that a lot of the tools that were built for Sway don't work on Hyperland. And you're thinking like, how can that possibly be the case? They're both using Wayland. The thing is about Wayland is that it's not a standard. So the developers behind Sway have done things one way. And they basically, as far as I know, are also the developers behind WL Roots. The idea is that those developers have done things in a certain way and made certain decisions. 
and developers who have made applications for Sway have had to go along with those decisions, making those applications work on Sway. The developers behind Hyperland, while also Wayland, and even using a lot of the WL root stuff, have done things in another way. They have done things in a different way. And that means that a lot of the tools that were made for Sway don't work on Wayland. So this is the biggest problem I have with Wayland right now. As I said at the beginning, I think that it's ready for regular people who use desktop environments. I think it's there. If, however, you are a window manager user, and you're the kind of person who likes to switch between window managers or compositors, you're going to have a harder time because a lot of the tools that work in one place aren't necessarily going to work in another. So I've been setting up Hyperland, and a lot of the things that make Sway really cool and really easy to use are the tools that they've developed to go along with it. Things like Sway Idle, Sway Background, things like that. And those tools work sometimes on Hyperland, sometimes they don't. It's really kind of a toss-up whether or not they work or not. And obviously, some of that is because they rely on tooling that was built for Sway. Other times, it's because of Wayland. So it really, it really is hit or miss. And that means that the Hyperland guys have had to go through and make a whole bunch of their own tools to do the things that Sway has already done, things like setting your background, things like figuring out how to idle your screen. All this stuff is separated between the two compositors, and they've it just has created a lot of work for the developers, but it also has made it very, very confusing for users who have switched between the two of them. Now, that's obviously just one part of it. The other part of it is that if you're switching from an Xorg-based window manager, like I am, I'm coming from Qtile, and I'm coming to Hyperland, which requires a whole suite of other applications to do the things that I've been doing for years in Xorg window managers. Things like setting the wallpaper, things like having a clipboard manager, right? Clipboard managers, you wouldn't think really would rely on Xorg, but the one that I use apparently does. Uh, like Things like being able to move something from the terminal to the clipboard through a pipe or something like that it has a program that is reliant on Xorg. It's Xclip. For whatever reason, requires Xorg. Doesn't work on Whalen. Uh, and uh, another example that I have is uh, Tilex. Tilex is a terminal emulator that I have used in the past, and I was going to use it this time because Hyperland doesn't do a very good job with scratch pads. It has a half-assed implementation of the i3 way of doing scratch pads where you can open up a window, send it to the scratch pad space, and then bring it back. It doesn't seem like there's a good way to launch something inside of a scratch pad. There is a way to do it, but it's not great. So I was going to use Tilex for my scratch pad, basically just use it in the quake mode and have it drop down. And I just use that as the scratch pad. The problem is that it doesn't work natively under Wayland at all. You have to use an environment variable in order to get it to work there. And it's, it's, it's janky. Like it's not, it's not fantastic. And especially in Hyperland, where there doesn't seem to be a way for newly opened windows to grab focus. Like it shows focus, but it doesn't grab the cursor in order to give it focus. So it's it's not great. So I end up having to still reach for my, reach for my mouse in order to give the scratch pad focus. It's, it's, it's a mess and it's not great. Still, the point is, is that I've been using Hyperland now for a day. I was really excited because I finally got OBS to work and I was like, yeah, I'm going to finally be able to make a video about it. And... It's just been one process after another of trying to get things to work well because I keep having to find alternatives to literally everything. The biggest example I have of this is bars. Now, there are some bars that work on both Xorg and Wayland. EWW is the, the biggest one, E or whatever it's called. I didn't care for EU when I tried it all that much. I did a live stream about it maybe four months ago or so. Uh, I never actually got it all the way set up. It was just kind of a mess, and uh, maybe it's time for me to give that another look. But there are a couple bars that can cross platforms like that, but the vast majority of them do not. So, like, I can't use Polybar because it doesn't work on Wayland. So, you know, that's an option. That that option is out. Uh, as far as I know, Tint Two doesn't work on Wayland. Maybe I'm wrong about that. I haven't used Tint Two in years, so I can't actually say it. But I wouldn't think that it would work on Wayland. So the normal bars that I normally use aren't an option. So you, I had to look at Wayland specific bars that can work on Wayland. And the biggest one that people seem to use is Waybar. And I'm, I'll make my own video on Waybar in the future if I can find anything positive to say about it. Because as of right now, 24 hours in, I can't find a single positive thing to say about Waybar. I don't think that it's Waybar's fault. 
well, it is kind of. They use JSON as their syntax for their configuration file. I'd rather them use YAML, to be honest with you. And everybody knows how I hate YAML. <laughs> the, the, it's not it's not great. I don't like JSON at all. The I've even gotten used to that. It's just it's not it's not a good bar. Just the, needless to say. Uh, and there aren't very many good alternatives. There's one called Iron Bar that I'm looking at now that looks kind of like t a Tint 2 bar. I haven't looked into it too much, so I'm, I could be completely off base there. I've just found it, or somebody pointed it out to me today. Uh, there are uh, a couple other ones that I'm going to look into. The point is, is that I have to find these alternatives, and the bar is a big one, right? The bar is obviously something that is very important to me in a window manager, and it has to work well with Hyperland also has to work well with the Wayland components and finding one has been kind of a pain in the ass. So uh, it's a struggle and that's kind of the point. That's the whole point of this video is that if you're using a Wayland compositor or a Wayland window manager, it can be a struggle finding the alternatives to stuff that you need because a lot of the stuff that you've been using for years just doesn't work. And that's a big deal. It, it's just, it makes it feel less user friendly than it should be right and it's not as if i expect window managers to be like noob friendly like i understand that i mean from years of using it i know that there's effort that has to be put in in order to make your window manager good but it shouldn't be that much effort right you shouldn't have to completely rebuild your software stack from the ground up in order to make it work you shouldn't have to find new tools for literally everything you do now there has been some improvements so like the last time I t was seriously trying a Wayland compositor was Sway. Rofi wouldn't work all that well. They actually had to fork Rofi and make a different version of it, and it was still kind of janky. It's gotten way better since then, and, act and the actual Rofi package now does work on Wayland, so I've been using that, which is good. Uh, because a lot of the R Wayland specific launchers aren't good at all, I've tried a few of them, or at least they weren't. Granted, that's been over a year, so it's possible that they've gotten better since then, but... My memories of those haven't, met, you know, aren't positive. So I'm glad that Rofi works. There have been some surprises that where applications that I've used on Xorg have started working on Wayland better. Uh, so that's good. But the, there still needs to be a ton of progress made there in order for Wayland to be ready in terms of window managers, right? And the last thing I want to talk about just real quick is that if Wayland is going to be the future, and we've all agreed that it is, and the future is kind of here already. If we, we're all at that point, window managers need to catch up, right? So the thing about window managers is that the developers behind them don't like to do change all that well, right? None of them move particularly fast. They're usually small teams of developers, so they don't move fast. They can't move fast because there's not a lot of them, right? And they don't adopt new technologies either at all or very quickly. And that's fine. That you know, The last thing we want them to do is adopt a technology you know, quickly and then not do it very well, right? So that's not a big deal. But the thing is, is that one of the greatest parts about a window manager, at least in my opinion, is that there's a lot of choice here, right? If you want to use a window manager, you, you can choose between i3, Qtal, Xmonad, DWM, uh, DK window manager, you know, left WM, you, you just, uh, Herbst left WM, you, the, the, the list goes on and on and on. And those are just the major ones. There's many different smaller ones that you could try. When it comes to Wayland window managers or compositors, there's not that many, you know, options out there. There's Sway, there's Hyperland, there's River. Qtile has a version of Wayland that I can't get to work. And that's basically it. There might be a couple other small ones that I'm forgetting about, but, you know, there's not a lot of them. And I think that over time, we'll see more. But what I would love to see, and I hope that this happens, is that established window managers on the Xorg side start to think about how they're going to support Wayland. Because eventually, Xorg's going to die off, and that means those window managers are going to be either abandoned or, you know, just kind of stuck in the land of Xorg. And it'd be nice to see some kind of talk about what happens at that point. So that's it for this video. A little bit of a rambly video. Uh, I'm using Hyperland right now. I've used it for 24 hours. I, I've... Like I said at the beginning, I'm going to make another video about Hyperland where I don't complain about Wayland for the entire time. That's why I wanted to separate them out because there are a lot of good things about Hyperland and I feel like they would have gotten buried if I'd spent 20 minutes, you know, bitching about Wayland in that video. So this way, my bitching about Wayland is out of my system for now. You know, I'm sure I'll come back to it. It's kind of my, become my hobby. That way I can just talk about the good and bad of Hyperland without having to talk about the mixed feelings I have towards Wayland. So that's it for this video. 
You can follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description. If you have thoughts on Wayland, you can leave those in the comment section below. Can, leaving a thumbs up or leaving a comment really does help out the video. So if you could do that, I'd really appreciate it. Thanks, everybody, for watching. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast. You can also support me on LiberPay or YouTube. Those links will be in the video description. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing. Without you, the channels would not be anywhere near where it is right now so thank you so very very much for your support i truly do appreciate it you guys are awesome without you just i don't know where i'd be so thank you so very much i how, how i wouldn't be youtubing that's probably for sure anyways thanks to everybody for, everybody for watching i'll see you next time